eternal Father, for the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So two questions that Jesus um, has given explicit, clear, unambiguous answer today. What must I do to enter heaven? And then who is my neighbor? And both of them are intertwined. What must I do to enter heaven? How can I go to heaven? So today Jesus has given us the formula. He has given us the key. He has given us the secret. And what is it? What is the key to heaven? What is the formula to enter heaven? Eh? What? Love. It's simple. To enter heaven, love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Then love your neighbor as yourself. That is the key to heaven. That is the secret. It is very clear. In other words, it is not something beyond us. That's why in the first reading, Moses said to the people of Israel, he said, Moses spoke to them saying, You shall obey the voice of the Lord your God and keep the commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of law. He said, for this commandment, which I command you this day, is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven. Heaven means so high that you cannot reach it, so that you will say, ah, who will go to heaven and bring this secret down to us, so that we can hear it and do it. No? He said, neither is it beyond the sea, Neither is he so buried at the abyss that you still need a hero who has to go down there and uproot it and bring. He said, no. He said, rather, the word is near you. In fact, it is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can. In other words, it is not unreachable. So the, the, the formula for heaven um, is simple and clear. Love. Everybody say love. Everybody say love. love. A woman died and went to heaven. At the gate of heaven, she met St. Peter. And St. Peter said, welcome. And I said, do you want to enter heaven? She said, yes. Say, well, it's simple. All you need to do is just spell love. And the man said, just spell. Yes, Peter said, spell love and you enter heaven. And she spelled love. L-O-V-E. Peter said, enter is it that simple? He said, yes. But Peter said, okay, just hold on. I want to go and attend to a business out there. If anybody comes, tell the person, just spell love and enter. Immediately her husband came. And they had been quarreling. And she was like, oh my God, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? The man said, what's your business? You died, I died. Uh-huh. All of us died. The man said, so you cannot even wait for me to enjoy heaven for one day. You just came immediately. What is this now? Why are you following me everywhere? Must you die now? The man said, please stop disturbing me. How do we enter heaven? The man said, well, if you have to enter heaven, you have to spell two words. The man said, what are those two words? She spelled Kazakhstan and Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Praise God. Is love simple? Or complicated? Is it difficult or easy? Hmm? Is love simple or complicated? Is it difficult or easy? 
First and foremost, I don't want to go into all those big details. There's a difference between something being simple and being easy. Something can be simple and not easy. Something can be easy and not simple. But I don't know, is love difficult? Or is, it, is it complicated? Or... So, four things I want to say about love. One, from if I think the other three is from William Barclay. Four things I want to say. See, love is neither simple nor complicated. It is neither difficult nor easy. It is simply possible. Love is neither simple nor complicated, neither difficult nor easy. It is what? Simply possible. Difficulty, complication, ease or simplicity depends on the person who is doing it. You can see that for the priest and the Levite, it was difficult for them. It was complicated. That's why they could not show love to that man. But for the good Samaritan, it was what? Simple and it was easy. So love is not simple. Love is not complicated. Love is not easy. Love is not difficult. Love is simply possible. And the Bible says in Luke, with God, all things are possible. And First John chapter 4 says, God is love. So if God is love, go to the place where it is written with God, all things are possible. Remove God and put love, since God is love. So what you have there is what? With love, all things are possible. Because God is love. With love. In other words, God makes things possible in this world through love. And anyone who decides to allow this love of God to radiate through his or her heart becomes a possibility maker. Becomes a possibility creator. So love is just possible. You can love. I can love. We can be good. We can be nice. It depends on as we approach it. It is not complicated. It is we human beings that make things complicated or easy. It's we human beings that make things difficult or easy. We human beings that make things simple or complicated. For the good Samaritan, it was simple. For him, it was easy. But for the priest and the Levite, it wasn't. We shall try and see why it was difficult for them to do what it took this simple man to do. But just remember that love is just possible. It is possible to love your wife. Treat her like a queen. It is possible. It is possible to love, um, respect your husband. It is possible to submit to him and treat him like a king. It is very possible. You know, it depends on us. It depends on us. So love is um, possible. Yes, love is possible depending on... We are the ones who make it either um, simple or, or complicated. And, all that. and I think we have a knack for making simple things complicated. And making easy things difficult in Nigeria. But as human beings, as a whole, we have just, um, I think we have that, that, this. See the way Adam married Eve. It was simple, it was not complicated. He just woke up and he saw her. Hey, behold, the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bone. Abby, she shall be called woman. Marriage. Simple. But come to our generation, our time. It is no longer simple now. It's no longer easy. Wait until they give you a list. <laughs> first of all, you get list. You get list from knocking first because now the process has even um, multiplied. You know, in some exam questions, the lecturer, some lecturers are wicked. Question one. A. Even the A, we have one, one. Da, da, da. Before you now go to B. And all of that. So you go and knock with list. After knocking, you go for introduction. After introduction, you now come and do uh, the main uh, customary this thing. After that, uh, you are not breaking your head over church own and all of that. Who is making all these things complicated? We human beings. Praise God. 
And the choice is us. Moses told them, listen, he said it's not hard. It's not beyond your reach. It's up to you. You can make your life simple. You can make your life complicated. It's up to you. It is up to you. You can make life simple for yourself. You can also make it difficult for yourself. It honestly is totally up to you. If you don't have money to wear designer clothes, you want to key yourself to wear designer clothes, you are making life what? Difficult for yourself. The body does not reject clothes. The body does not know a cloth that is 1.5 million and a cloth that is just 20,000. The same bed that is 500,000, we hold your trouser as a bet of 1,500 we hold it. <laughs> you will not wear a bet of 1.5 million and you are walking on the road and say, I am wearing a bet of 1.5 million, make way for me. For we are, most times the bet is even covered. You can make life simple for yourself or you can make life difficult. Borrow sense, the areas it is within your power to make life simple for yourself. Make life simple for yourself. Make life simple for yourself. Stop competing with people who have the money to afford certain things in life. I've always used the example of women and um, Bone Street. Bone Street, um, this expensive uh, hair. I learned that there are some hairs that are up to 500,000, one point something million. Ah, God forbid. <laughs> Engineer 1.5 million here is not a plot of land in Tuga Maji. <laughs> and why do you wear these things? Most times, ladies, you wear these expensive um, hair things so that you can attract men. And we are telling you, I have interviewed all men, beginning from my father. All men. We do not know the difference between 1.5 million attachment and 50,000 naira own. Stop wasting your time. We know they know. We know they know. We know they know. We know they know. So save yourself 1.450 million naira. Go and eat and buy land. Buy the one of 50,000. Put it in your head. If you are fine, save you are fine with or without attachment. And you made fourth class in the university. You are carrying 1.5 million naira. Yeah. Is that not injustice today? <laughs> Praise God. You can make life simple for yourself. The part of the reason, um, um, like I said, okay, there is also a difference between loving passionately and loving compassionately. Why was it possible for the good Samaritan to show love to the man who was on the ground. And the priest and the Levite couldn't do that. Why could they not do what he did? The Bible mentions something. There is one thing he had that they didn't have. What did the Bible say? The, all of them saw the man. The priest saw the man. Followed another way. The Levite saw the man. Followed another way. The good Samaritan saw him. What happened? The Bible says when the good Samaritan saw him. Where he was lying. He had what? compassion he had compassion that was what he had that's the quality that's the character he had that distinguished him when you have compassion love becomes possible even in difficult circumstances you make it possible even when it is complicated you find a way to make it possible it is compassion what is compassion i don't know the hebrew but the way it is described from the bible compassion is described like when you have it is that churning in your stomach. It is that unease. It is that feeling you have in your stomach and you don't rest until you go out of your way to do something to alleviate the suffering or the pain of another person. It is described like diarrhea. When you have diarrhea, you know you are not resting until you go to the toilet and relieve yourself. That is the way compassion is described in the Bible. That is the etymology of compassion. It is that feeling that uncomfortable feeling, that painful feeling you have within you, and you are not restful, you are not comfortable until you have relieved yourself. And relieving yourself means that you do something, no matter how small, within your capacity to get that person who is in trouble to see some light. That is compassion. That's what makes love possible. That's what the good Samaritan had. 
No matter your status in the church, no matter how many years you have been in Christianity, if you don't have compassion, love will not always, but never ever even surface from you. So it's compassion. So our problem, part of the problem is that we love passionately. We love things passionately. But we don't love human beings compassionately. We do not love compassionately. All of us, we are guilty. All of us. We hardly love compassion. It is even possible to love human beings, fellow human beings, passionately without loving them compassionately. A good example, Herod and Herodias. You remember Herod and Herodias? The story of Herod, the one who took his brother's wife with the woman, both of them. They loved passionately, but they didn't love compassionately because when you love compassionately you cannot go against kingdom values to get what you want so all we see are passionate lovers not compassionate lovers even in our day there is a there are times we have heard in history when a man we plot with another woman to kill the husband because both of them want to be together that's why church does investigation when it comes to marriage you don't know when you love passionately, most times we love passionately, it is this kind of love where there is something in need for you. But compassionate love means there is nothing in need for you. This good Samaritan does not know that victim from anywhere. He was pretty, very certain, nothing would come out of it. Nobody was going to tell him thank you. Nobody was going to give him anything. He didn't go to any crusade where preachers told him that when you do um, charity, God is going to make you win the biggest contract in Asurok. No. It was compassion. Compassionate love is a love that is coming from selflessness. Even when there is no remote or foreseeable reward for that particular act, you are still not restless until you do it. That is compassionate loving. Passionate loving is straight by butter. And that's why we make things complicated or difficult. A young man sees a girl he loves, he wants to settle down with, to impress the girl. Before the girl, we say yes. The guy has to sell his uh, land, his property, so that he can buy for her what she desires. Then she will say yes. And then until she sees that thing she desires, she cannot say yes to him. And he too, because he's looking for something from her, he's also willing to do what? To sell everything, his birth right, and even his, some, these days some of us even sell our death right. <laughs> and these days some of us sell our death right. You sell your death right when you have given the power of your death to another person, who will determine how and when you will die. Because he's looking for something from her. That's the kind of love that, that we see thrown up and down. You know, you know, thread by butter, call it thread by butter. Love. There must be something in need. You will not say yes to him. So when you both now get, he's looking for something from you. You're also looking for something from him. And then he's straight by butter. I give you what you want. You give me what I want. That's loving passionately. Romantic love. It looks innocent, but he's the most disguised, selfish love on earth. Praise God. Are you a compassionate lover or a passionate lover? <laughs> Let me ask your neighbor, are you compassionate? <laughs> Touch somebody, say, are you compassionate? <laughs> Without compassion, you can't be a good Samaritan. And we are all very passionate in many things. We are passionate in pursuing wealth. We are passionate in uh, establishing relationships. But compassion is a totally different... It's comp with compassion, yourself is replaced by the other. Can you see that we have a long way to go? Praise God. We have what? A long way. That's why love is not fluffy. You want to learn about love is the Bible. It's not Nollywood or Hollywood. Love is not fluffy. Love is not psychedelic. That's why it's a commandment. To love, you must develop the love muscle. Compassionate. It is compassion. Most of Jesus' miracles were by compassion. He puts himself in people's shoe. When he fed the 5,000 uh, uh, men, not instead of uh, women, what did the disciples say? They, say? they said to him, do what? Send them away. 
But the Bible says Jesus felt compassionate. Synonyms for compassion, pity, mercy, empathy, sympathy. People who go out of their way to help others are compassionate people. It's compassion. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. He said, be compassionate to one another. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8. Put on compassion. Put on compassion. Second Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 3 to 4. Compassion. Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 22 to 24. When you hear mercy, mercy is compassion. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. That mercy there is the same thing as compassion. It is compassion that will make a woman treat her maid like her own children. Lack of compassion. Your maid is eating good food in the kitchen or the veranda. Your children are eating on the dining, warm food. I'm not saying put your maid. Maid should know where they belong. I'm not saying put them on the same table, but if you put them on the same table, you will not die. You. Uh -huh. The complexion of your children will not change. Their lifespan will not reduce. But I'm not saying, you know, but if the spirit moves you, do it. But why would you not care about the quality of her food as you would care about the quality of the food of your children? The same way that we bath your children very early, prepare their uh, breakfast. You don't care whether she goes to school late or not. Your student would have gone on time. She is going when the fourth class has gone. And you are away. Then at the end of the class, when she comes back with bad reports, you are beating her. I know you are a ludo. You can never do anything. Meanwhile, you are the principality and the power behind her family. It's lack of compassion. When it comes to beating your children, hey, Junior, what do you, don't, don't do it again. If you did it again, I'm going to smack. In fact, you are grounded. Grounded means no cartoon. But when your mate does something, you combine anger and koboko. Some of you even use barbed wire. Where is your compassion? A compassionate husband can never beat his wife. It's not possible. A compassionate husband cannot raise his hand against his wife. It's men who lack compassion. And a compassionate wife cannot kill the husband with her tongue, dangerous tongue. It's compassion. Help me ask your neighbor, where is your compassion? Where is your compassion? Where is your compassion? When you lack compassion, you are the priest. It doesn't matter your status in this church. Even in Father's house, the absence of compassion makes priests live like beasts. So a parish priest, he's driving a 2022 model uh, car. When it is time to service his car, he just call um, the mechanic. He'll carry his car. He can spend even 200,000, 300,000 serving his car. But his assistant is managing Toyota uh, 1998. When he comes to service this guy, even come on 30 times, before he will give his assistant 30 times, say, they know they give you allowance. Go and use your allowance. It's lack of compassion. Sorry I say things comically, but I mean it. They happen. It's lack of compassion. It's absolute lack of compassion. Without this compassion, we are not different from beasts. All of us, in one way or the other, so it is compassion that made the good Samaritan the good Samaritan. That's why he could, you know, do all of that. So love is not simple or complicated. It's not easy or difficult. Love is simply possible. And it's compassionate people that make it possible. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just be patient with me, okay? Be patient with me. We must learn compassion. If Nigerian leaders were compassionate, this country will not be like this. Nigeria is like that man lying on the ground, lifeless, 
steadily bleeding to death. President will come and pass. He's flying to France for medical attention. He has not asked whether they are receiving a health center for this man. Senior president will pass. He's going to Dubai for vacation. He has not asked about this. Governor will come and pass. For where? Ministers. They all come and pass doing nothing. All it takes is compassion. Because with compassion, there is no, there's no boundary. I'm coming to that. We just need compassionate people. And if you and I, that's what distinctively makes you a Christian, is love. Love. And I'm telling you, compassion is at the heart of it. Okay, so, so that's the first thing. Hey, the only one thing I don't talk about love since I've been so it, love is possible. Everybody say love is possible. love is possible. And since God is love, when you say with God all things are possible, that means with love all things are possible. Number two, love is expressive or it must be expressive. You have to express it. First John chapter 3 verse 70. Say if any of you is blessed with worldly goods and you see somebody in need and you don't go out of your way to help the person with what you're say, where is the love? How can you say you love God? In other words, you must express your love for the other person, for the neighbor. That is how you express love to God. As long as God has empowered you, whatever you can afford, that you can. James also said the same thing. If you see somebody hungry, say to him, it is well with you. He said, that's nonsense. He said, no, no, no. If somebody is hungry, you have food. If it's two, two bags of yam, you have. Go and carry what? One and give person. If it is one, at least you can slice some. Give him, seven, give him 30%. Keep the other 70 for yourself. He said you must do something as long as you have the ability and the capability to do it. That's love. Love must be expressed. Husband, express your love to your wife. Tell your, la- or your wife, I love you. She wants to hear it. Women must hear that. By the way, that was the lie you told her before she agreed to be your girlfriend and become your wife. So stop, don't stop telling her that lie. Keep telling her that lie. I love you. You are the most beautiful woman on earth. Oh, Akwanwam. Mm, keep telling her that lies until death do you part. Express your love. You're coming back from work. Simple things. And this is not, this, this, I am not uh, joking. Simple things. Buy stuff for your wife. Buy um, um, that you're coming back from work and you bring apple. How much is apple to many of you men? It's nothing. Honey, I just bought this for you. Those simple gestures. Express your love. Woman, the same thing. Express your love to your husband. Express, express your feelings. Genuine, convivial feelings. Love must be expressed. Love has to be expressed. How you express it may be different. <laughs> it's not everybody that can find rose flower. Rose flower does not even grow much uh, in Nigeria. Plug the things that grow in Nigeria. Dogonya will leave there. <laughs> That's why I say it's not what? Complicated. If your husband does this for you out of genuine love, you should accept it. <laughs> May God help me. <laughs> okay, I'm very serious. <laughs> love has to be what? expressed that is the point and for god expressing love for him means doing good for those in need those in need is very important those in need love is expressive love is expansive everybody say expansive 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 means it has no barrier it is not limited by tribe by denomination by ethnicity by religion Anybody and everybody who is in need, even your worst enemy, at that point needs love. You must give it. So love is expansive. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43. Be like a heavenly father in heaven. He says, if you greet only those who greet you, what different are you from the uh, unbelievers? If you show love to only those who show you love, well, how are you different from these other people? He said, no. You must be like a heavenly father. He makes the sun to shine both on the wicked 
and the good, the rain on everybody. That's it. It's expansive. There is no barrier. It must not be from one Catholic to the other. It must not be from one Christian to the other. It must be to everybody and anybody who is in need. So love is expansive. Expand your love. That's why I use the, the addition of uh, mates and housemates in the house. I know it's not too easy, naturally, but that's why you come to church. The essence of coming to church is to help you do those supernatural things that make life better for others that ordinarily you couldn't do. Forget that we have replaced church with so many things. Forget that we have turned church to entrepreneurial centers where you come to collect secrets of prosperity. That's not what church is meant for. Praise God. Fourthly, love is or could be expensive. John chapter 15 verse uh, 13. Jesus said, a greater love has no man than that he should do what? Lay down his life. So sometimes love could be costly. It's sacrificial. Sometimes to love may mean taking something completely away from you. It could be. Mothers show us that kind of love. Mothers literally kill themselves for their children. That's expensive love. Fathers do the same. They may not carry the baby for nine months in the womb, but they carry your well-being every day in their world, in their head. They are laboring. The love of parents is, 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 is expensive. It's costly, sacrificial. So sometimes to love, it, it must cost us something. Praise God. Praise God. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Now the next question is, let's even probe. Why, what could be responsible for the Levites and the priests? Not attending to that man. What could be uh, uh, responsible? From uh, William Barclay, the probable cause is for the priest. Numbers 19 from verse 11 says, if you touch a corpse, you are unclean for seven days. Meaning you cannot enter the temple until you go through ritual cleansing. And that ritual cleansing will take seven days. So it's most likely that the priest remember that I have to be in the temple, whether it's the next day or in two days' time or whatever. So if I touch this corpse and this man is dead, that means I cannot perform my function. I cannot enter the temple. And for the Jew, the temple is for them the highest good, the highest value, so to say. So what stopped this priest is not necessarily something bad. Same thing with the Levite. The Levite's own is that he came close and he saw the man and he also left. It could be, um, it is called the, um, he was, while the priest was duty conscious, the Levite was security or safety conscious. Because those days, just like in our day, that route was very notorious for arm robbery and all of that. And one of the things they used, they can come, somebody can come and form lifeless on the ground and you are going to help the person. The rest will now do what? We sprang up on you. It happens even in our time, Abby. Uh, sometimes robbers can dress as sisters. They can come as fathers or they can lay like um, a victim and then you come down and they listen. So he was safety conscious. He was um, uh, safety conscious. The other guy was duty conscious. Now, yet, yet, for Jesus to have used the priest and the Levite who represent the highest personalities in religious good, as the ones who didn't do what God required, even under the daunting circumstances. What did Jesus tell you? Jesus is saying, there can be no reason that is too good for you to avoid doing something to show love for somebody who is in need. Nothing can be gooder. I don't want to use better. Good, gooder, goodest. Nothing can be gooder than helping somebody. As I was coming from Mass, as priest, Mass is 9.15, and I have just five minutes to get here. Then I encountered an accident on the road. Somebody's bleeding to death, and there's no other person there. And leaving that person there means he will die. Jesus is saying, you must leave Mass, suspend Mass, attend to this person first. When you come, apologize to your people. You must do that God you are coming to serve here. Is the God that is in danger of dying here. Attend to him here first. This is your first mass now. Celebrate it before you come here. Ah, should I go further? 
I've used tights before, so I don't want to use tights. Some people are making me look like I'm uh, against tights. How can me against tights? And I've had been now. How I want to survive? How, about, how can I be against tights? But I cannot, tell, I cannot hide the truth from you. I've used tights before. You're coming to pay your tights, and that's the only money you have. And somebody is about dying and requires that money, and there is no other alternative. You use that tight and take care of the person. You have paid your tight. You have even overpaid. How people understood that to mean that Father said, don't pay tight, I don't understand. If Jesus expected the priest on his way to have stopped and attended to this person, that's the same thing. Hey, Jesus. You have gone and collected lists. They've given you all the money. You have gathered all the money you need to now go and carry the gear from the father's house. And on your way, <laughs> you meet somebody who is hungry and is dying. And that's all the money you have. If you don't give them that money, you are not going to come home with your wife again. <laughs> Jesus is saying, if you go ahead and neglect this person who is dying and go and marry, you will go to hell. <laughs> Now you have heard me. You see why it's dangerous listening to me. <laughs> now you know you are in trouble. All of us are in trouble. <laughs> yeah, all of us are in trouble. You cannot sacrifice that imminent, immediate, urgent charitable need for any other good thing. That's what Jesus is saying. How much more? Uh, you are dating and you have already planned you have even made reservation in Sheraton or Nikon or Crush Cafe the girl is there waiting for you in her lovely dinner dress and you, you have already swept your account this last money you are going to impress 200 and something thousand then on your way you met this woman my son, I am dying what is it? there is a lump here. The doctor said, all I need is 200 and something thousand before they can operate. And you know you have no money elsewhere. You can't even have anybody to borrow. <laughs> My brother, if you go for that date, you are a history. <laughs> it's good though, but something gooder. Somebody say gooder. <laughs> that's what, you're, that's, what that, that's the interpretation that Jesus is saying. Praise God. Praise God. That there can be nothing more urgent and exigent than taking care of the God that is in front of you right here, right now. Do not be scared. The Bible says in Romans 8, for those who love God, all things will do what? Turn around and walk for their good. I'm not going to preach the reward for you. I don't want to because Jesus does not preach all that. But from experience, God still has a way of doing what? Of turning things. If you use the money, you should have used to pay bride price or take your fiancé for a date for something charitable and she does not understand and leaves you. My brother, cry. You are broken hearted. Cry. I will not pretend and tell you it's not painful. Cry very well. Cry, cry. Go and beg her. If she does not accept you, go ahead. A more beautiful lady is standing for you somewhere. God has a way. But I will not preach the reward for you because the reward is God's prerogative. Problem in the church is that we preach reward as against the act. God decides when, how. And now what I can absolutely tell is that God is a rewarder. Whether I preach it or not. If I come here and ask you to make donations for the church, I don't need to tell you what your reward will be. If you do it selflessly from your heart, leave it for God. He knows when to reward you. That's why I say he who sees in the secret will do what? He reward you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just leave it for God. But that's what we are called to do. So duty consciousness, sometimes we are prevented from doing something um, good, not because of any bad reason, but for some other good reasons that we have. There are reasons we are in that bad. And all of that. So just remember that God wants you to do the immediate the immediate. The immediate. Um, sometimes um, it is the law. So it is consciousness of the law. The priest is consciousness of the law that is killing love. It's consciousness of the law. Sometimes there is a clash between law and love. 
Part of Nigeria's problem, we have a constitution that is confused. Abby? Our constitution is confused, full of ambiguities and ambivalences. One court, two different courts can give two different verdicts on the same case using technicalities of the law. What is this stupid thing about exclusive, uh, exclusive list of federal government? It's part of Nigeria's problem. States that will have the capacity to generate and do this thing, you must go through the rigors of uh, getting the federal. Sometimes law is a big problem. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't allow something good to prevent you from doing something better. Life is not either or. For Jesus, it's not either the temple or this. No. There will always be time for the temple. It's not always either or. You can do both. You can do both. Wave your hand like this if you are with me. I, have I lost you? No. Ah, time now, Waka. But this weather is confusing. It's like this is 6 o'clock. <laughs> 6 a.m. in the morning. Then finally, the good Samaritan. Hmm, God of Moses. Can somebody open John chapter 8, verse 48? If you have a Bible, open John chapter 8, verse 48. The good Samaritan. See, when Jesus tells stories in the Bible, he is very intentional. That Jesus chose to call the Samaritan good was to bomb and detonate, if you want to call it, uh, what did Obama call it, mother of all bombs, on the prejudices and the biases of his Jewish audience. He was talking to Jews. And you are telling Jews that a Samaritan was the good person. Not their priest, not their Levi. Do you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was throwing it to their face that you guys think that you are the only good person. That a good person can come from anywhere. Listen, a good Samaritan is an oxymoron to the Jew. A good Samaritan is an oxymoron to the Jew. As far as the Jew is concerned, you cannot have good and Samaritan together. They are mutually exclusive. Jala, for some of you, a good house man is an Aussie moron to you. A good full and is an Aussie moron to you. A good Yubo man is an Aussie moron to you. A good Yoruba is an Aussie In other words, you are biased and prejudiced by your words, by your tribe, your religion, your ethnicity, and stuff, and stuff like that. So for Jesus to say, the good Samaritan, who was the neighbor, the Samaritan, he was, he was like, can a Samaritan be good? If the Jews and the Samaritans never saw each other eye but eye. But last Sunday you saw when Jesus was going to Jerusalem. The Bible said he was going to pass through a Samaritan village. Abby? And they stopped him. Then James and John say what? Lord, why are you wasting time? Are you not the, are you not the consuming fire? You don't even need to bother yourself. Just tell us now. Give us the authority to command what? Fire to come from heaven and burn them. Jesus rebuked them. What the Samaritans were doing, they were just expressing age-old antagonism enmity between them and the Jews. Each of them looked for a way to hurt the other. So instead of you to pass through this short way, no, go and pass through the rancor. They had enmity. The Samaritans were Jews who remarried or who married pagans during the exile. So the normal Jews who never mingled with non-Jews considered them what? Impure. So if you go to John chapter 8 verse 48, when Jesus was um, arguing with the Jews, they called him a Samaritan. So they use the word Samaritan to insult you as a Jew. They can say, look at this Samaritan. When they say you're a Samaritan, it means you are impure. You are a heretic. You are demon-possessed. You are a You understand what I'm talking about? In Ebola, when they say you are a Ewu is not even the most biggest, uh, it's not the biggest insult. When they want to make the insult more, Ewa Osa. Then they ask other people, they want to say, they say, in Yamiri. I heard that one day, soldiers stopped uh, people in the north. There were five house people and uh, one Igbo man. They say, how many of you are there? They say, Mu Biaru De in Yamiri Daya. <laughs> All of us in Nigeria, we have this bias, right? That we even use other people to insult ourselves. It was like that. In the so, for Jesus to say, good, Samari, good Samaritan, no, 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 no. How can a Samaritan be good? On the last day, 
you'll be surprised. The people you think will be in heaven, they will not be there. It's the people you have religiously, tribally, ethnically precluded that you will see there. That's why it says in Matthew 7 from verse 21, not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of my father, but those who do the will of my father. In Makwan, do you know those who do the will of my father? Sometimes you judge people by appearance. On the, on the last day, you'll be surprised to see the girl who is always wearing trousers and the, and the spaghetti. She is uh, wearing her high heel. She's catwalking to heaven. Catwalking to heaven. Oh, yes, you'll be surprised. Then you see that one that is always dressing like uh, Mary, Legion of Mary, everywhere covered. Even the Christian one is not enough. She even put a hijab on top of it. You see her. She's walking to her. You'll be surprised. You'll be shocked. Stop judging people by your narrow-minded categories. He just says, it's compassion. Not your tribe. Not your religion. Not your denomination. If your Christianity, your Catholicism does not help you to develop and dig the well of compassion. Forget it. The unlikely Christians, some, some theologians call them the anonymous Christians, those who do the will of my Father. So be careful. And Jesus has made it very clear. On the last day, he will separate the sheep from the goats. What to do to enter heaven is very clear. It is those who gave food to the hungry, clothed the naked, House the homeless, visited the prisoner, prayed for the sick, calmed the anxious. Which other one? Gave clothes to the naked. So everything we do in church, that my, I'm a legionary, I'm a parish priest, or this is to help me develop this word, compassion. Finally. I mean finally, now finally, finally. Okay? So, finally, finally, <laughs> there are two kinds of human beings in the world. Lawyers and lovers. Lawyers and lovers. It was a lawyer that asked Jesus that question. Lawyers ask questions. Lawyers do. So you either a lawyer or a lover. Who is a lawyer? A, 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 sorry, who is a lover? A lover is somebody who, despite all odds, finds a reason to do something good for those in need. That is a lover. Despite all odds. Find a reason to do something good. David was a lover. He had every reason to keep Paul. I mean Saul. Self-defense. He could have killed Saul out of what? Self-defense. He was anointed, so he had a legitimate claim to the throne. Why are you pursuing me? I'm only waiting for you to die or your tenure to be over. And I will claim, so why are you pursuing me? He had, he had good reasons to kill Saul, but he spared Saul. He found a reason not to pay back evil with evil. That's a lover. Abraham was a lover. It was because of Lot. Lot was a selfish, greedy. Oh God, sometimes, why won't you excuse us to use some words? I wanted to call him greedy, selfish, S-O-B. But I will not say that, okay? No, I will not say that. I said it. I withdraw it. What, what is S-O-B? Now you know. My own S-O-B is son of somebody. <laughs> Abraham brought Saul out, brought Lot out. Everything Lot acquired in life was through Abraham. And the Bible says Lot's headsmen were having problems with Abraham's headsmen because their cattle have increased. Who will stay where? And Abraham was one who called Lot and said, you will not quarrel with me, I will not quarrel with you. We are kith and kin. Make a choice. Anywhere you choose, I will go the opposite direction. And the Bible says, Lot opened his eyes, looked at the place that was lush, beautiful, green, and chose there. Meanwhile, Abraham was your elder. It was Abraham that fathered you, gave you the opportunity to become who you become. If you had a modicum of respect and self led what would Lot have done? He would have said, I am a younger person. I still have energy. You're the one who brought me. Choose the better place. Let me go the other side. But Lord chose what in his mind was the better place. That's what the Bible says. We do not move by sight but by faith. You know where he ended? Sodom and Gomorrah. The Kinah, it was because of him Abraham went to fight. But because of him, Abraham had to test God's patience. Abraham was a lover. There was every reason for Abraham to say, 
good for him. After all, he's the one that chose it. I wanted to buy her Toyota Matrix, but she said, hey, it's Mrs. Okay, she has bought Mrs. It don't knock engine. I will never spend my money on her. There is every reason not to show her love again. But as a lover, you will find a reason. First Corinthians chapter 13, love makes excuses. Hello. Hi. Joseph was a lover. He had every reason to revenge on his brothers. But he found a reason not to. Herod was a lawyer. He had every reason to spare John the Baptist. He even acknowledged that John was a prophet. John spoke the truth. Yet, he found one reason not to do good, to destroy his life. That's lawyer. So who are lovers? Lovers are people who find reason. They will look for it and excavate it. Even when it is not, they will do something good. While lawyers are those who, when there are multiple reasons to do something good, they will find one good reason not to do it. I pray for you. May God make us lovers. Amen. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God has been poured into our heart by the Spirit of God that has been given to us. May God make us lovers. Amen. May we love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And may we learn to love our neighbors as ourselves. May God make you a good Samaritan. Amen. With all he has blessed you with, may he grant you the compassion to help those who are in need whenever you meet them in the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of us here, we might be like that man who is lying lifeless. Maybe your marriage is lying lifeless, right? And maybe your family is lying lifeless. Maybe your business is lying lifeless. Maybe there is something about you that is lying lifeless. The ultimate good Samaritan is Jesus himself. He will not abandon you. He will locate you and resurrect you again. I say he will pour healing oil and balm on you. God will not let you die in that difficult situation. Help is coming your way. God will locate you. He will either send angels or people to bring you up and keep you standing again through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe you want God, the Father Almighty. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, he Say